Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Wine Library TV. Philippe and I have been sitting here for a full day, just waiting to tape another episode <laughs> and haven't changed nothing. <laughs> been drinking a lot of great wine. Obviously I'm here again with Philippe Melka, you know, top winemaker in the world, one of the best in the world. And we've got four different wines from him. Well, you know I'm a huge fan. Um, I'm going to get autographs after, after this taping. We've got two wines that, exactly, right next to Chad Pennington. Um, so we've got uh, two wines that he works on here, and then we've got a very, you know, special opportunity to try his actual wine. So let's get right into it. We're going we're gonna to power through four amazing wines for you today. So we're going to start with the 2002 Lale Napa Red, which is quickly becoming very, very hot, uh, hotter and hotter, which is great because Robin Lale, who the wonderful David Schwartz introduced me to a few years ago, may be the classiest person in all of California. Absolutely. And so uh, it's a real honor to, to try her wine here. So let's let's talk about, tell us a little bit about the Lale project. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud to uh, uh, to really introduce Robin because uh, basically that's really her who put me on a, wow. on a map in, in a way. Um, I met her when I was back in, uh, um, uh, at Dominus back in 91, she was partner there, mm -hmm. and in 95 she started her own company and, and, uh, and put me on board, so I was very proud to be that, and I think she's really a lady, a, a great lady in Napa Valley. Take so, Oh. It's, you <laughs> this know, is insane. I mean, creamy, this is where I wish technology rich. had catch up, where we could put, you know, it to the camera and you could actually smell it, you know. Oh, too, it's an unbelievable uh, vintage for Lair. And the difference, you know, she owned a vineyard on Howell Mountain, as maybe yeah, for, the, for the people times. who know that, uh, 1,800 feet elevation. And, and uh, uh, the first year, that's the first year, you know, since 95, actually, we put 100% Cabernet. Uh, wines with Robin. That was kind of really the direction we wanted to kind of bring a little bit more, you know, strength mm -hmm. and power there. And I think, you know, too, we, we just uh, succeeded. I mean, it's just an unbelievable wine. And still small, small scale. The flavor is just extraordinary. The nose itself has got a little bit of eucalyptus and just you know, great it's, black fruit. It's harmonious. I love the texture also yeah. of the wine. You know, the introduction is silky very, smooth. very silky. It's like Robin, very sophisticated, yeah. very noble, but very, very gentle, very smooth. <laughs> she is. Not every day. She would be the president uh, of this country. <laughs> this is really she, remarkable. She, we, we, we're very proud of this one. This is remarkable. Honestly, it's it's you know, one of our favorite tunnels. An easy 95 point yeah, wine, just yeah. tons of structure, lots of fruit. Still not priced crazy and just remarkable. You can see we're down to half bottles because the 750s just flew out. Okay, Absolutely. let's move on. That's just amazing. Highly recommend if you've never had a Lale wine to go out and try one. It's, uh, All right, one this is a 29. big, big wine. And Tell us a little about V29. So 29, um, uh, amazing story. Basically, you know, the previous owner started back in 1992. I've been involved since only 1999, but very proud to be there, uh, especially when the new owner, Chuck McMinn, bought, um, bought the, uh, the venture in 2000 and allowed us to uh, have all the tools to make great wine. Uh, by especially building a, an incredible winery. I think, Gary, you went there and you saw uh, by yourself... That was uh, an amazing project. Uh, amazing winery completed in 2002. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, the vineyard is really uh, in St. Helena, you know, west-facing. It's right there. Um, I mean, east-facing, sorry, on the lower part. You will mm -hmm. see just uh, past uh, Berenger. It's a small two-acre vineyard. It's only 500 cases. That's what Vineyard 29 is. But the good part is the owner decided to, to buy another vineyard called also Aida, who kind of bring a little bit more volume with still the, the very high-end uh, uh, quality that we obviously looking for. So in 2001, one of the top very classic vintage, all the winemakers love it. Uh, I will say compared to 2002 where we have a very Californian-like uh, uh, vintage, very rich. 02, 01 is a little bit more classy. Uh, a little bit more crisp, a little bit more acidity, still with uh, the same kind of ripeness. 100% Cabernet also uh, from this vineyard have been uh, actually uh, planted from one of the top uh, vineyard managers in uh, Napa Valley, uh, David Ebro. 
and actually was he charges a couple bucks to do that a couple of bucks <laughs> one actually but amazing. I mean, he's the guy the guy, and, the guy. And, and, and i think vineyard 29 was probably one of the first vineyard planted like close spacing that yes. most of the people do uh, uh those days so very no, chuck very did unique. a chuck did an amazing job and the quality of the winery is amazing i mean it just was the nose the nose now the suggested retail on this is quite. It, this is an expensive that's, wine. That's, is, that's uh, one of the the, the above a hundred yeah. wines. Uh, we we uh, we in a one thirty five to one fifty uh, uh, yeah. with a new release. So uh, uh, two thousand and uh, and one I think was released in uh, hundred and ten kind of range. This is incredible. This actually is ironic because while tasting this wine, it does kind of remind me of more of the, you know, left bank top Bordeaux. Definitely. And I think, you know, uh, have being in uh, East Facing, having a little bit more cooler spirit compared to the other wines, sure. you know, you feel that on, on yeah, those it wines. Yeah, it know, reminds me more of like a little bit more in a, in a Bordeaux yeah. style, if, yeah. if you like. I mean, this is a top-notch wine, obviously. It's, it's a pricey wine. It's ridiculously tough to get so obviously you know this wine is one of those wines you use the uh, business account on and a business dinner on but if you see it if you see vineyard 29 this is an absolute experience this to me is easily compatible to a top-notch first growth and obviously I don't know if you know this but I'm starting to get prices this morning we're looking at 500 to 700 dollars a bottle for the 2005 first growths coming out out so the world's changing and you know it's scary absolutely it's scary good. to me yeah, to say this yeah. but Vineyard 29 is on the verge of maybe becoming a value. You know, the world is definitely changing with top-notch wines. That's what we hope so. Honestly. Let's talk about real value now. <laughs> tell me about tell me about this project. So, um, you know, it's it's my own, and uh, like usual, usually I um, 2003 don't, CJ Cab. Don't talk too much about my own. So, uh, but I'm very proud. You know, we started this project back in 1990, 1996. Um, and, and a dilemma was really no financial resources. So I, I've done a great deal with my client, be able to get grapes every year back then. Sure. In 2003, we've done a great switch uh, uh, where we really finalized uh, a little bit better those two projects, make some foundation. Uh, where CJ, uh, for the people who are uh, going to test us once, uh, we have a little explanation on the back label. You know, for uh, two children, Chloe and Jeremy, that's where the label is so kids like and fancy. And we wanted to have a little fun. The idea was to create, you know, a small family project where uh, a very approachable wines, you know, these wines are all in a, a 35 to 38 retail, depending on the, of the states, and uh, a Cabernet wines, it's 100% Cabernet, where the grapes here come from a, a little cooler side of Napa, Coombsville. Mm -hmm. The reverse uh, Métis, which for us, uh, it's uh, 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 what I'm trying to do with all the other projects, a very site-specific uh, wines now in 2003, where we finally found a, a beautiful uh, four-acre estate in St. Helena next to Spotswood, mm -hmm. Madrona Ranch, mm -hmm. a lot of famous wines being from there. And uh, we still uh, make only, unfortunately, 500 cases of the Métis, about 1,000 cases of, of the CJ. So, it's As tough. You know, it's Take it tough. from me. It's Philippe small. and I have a very good relationship, <laughs> and the 03 came out, and I had to send lots of emails and plenty of phone calls. It was mm. a very tough wine to get. I think it obviously got a very big score in 03 mm. from uh, good old Bob in Maryland. And uh, so let's try the 03 CJ. This has always been a wine that we've sent out as a. This has not been rated, but you can need to try this. We've had a lot of success with the CJ in the past. It's a very low-key approach on marketing. Uh, we didn't want to have any rating. We wanted to have the consumers, you know getting used to this wine and starting to love it. And, uh, and I think they'll do because it's a very approachable wine. A big wine still because it's Cabernet from Napa Valley, so rich, you have all the richness, but also you have maybe the more sweetness, more approachability there. The real, the real tough thing with this wine for me is that the production is so small. To me, when I taste a wine of this nature where it's over-delivering for the price, again, it's a low 30s price point for this wine, 
This is the kind of wine that I like to sink our teeth into a wine library and buy three, four hundred cases of and really promote and make something happen. Obviously, they only make a thousand cases. So, you know, it, it becomes a tough wine because we tend not to be able to email it as much as we'd like or let people know about it because, you know, we get it in, there's a following, there's a little cult following for the wine, and it's pretty much gone. So, you know, to me, this is where the blog, the video blog, is a great opportunity for us because whether you're in New Jersey or in another state, if you're lucky enough to find CJ, and, and it does have good distribution on wine lists because I've seen them around. This is the kind of thing that we're all looking for. True, double the quality to the price of value. And that's what this delivers. I mean, as I was tasting this, I was really going in my mind saying, how much, I mean, this is really of the frame of a $75 to $100 Napa cap. So it, it's really extraordinary. And, and the flavor and the structure is so serious that you would just never guess that this wine is priced in that price range. I mean, you, you know our responsibility and my responsibility. I have to deliver whatever is the price. I have to make a great product. I have to, you know, to have the consumer and really you, and, become and, fidel. And, and your kids' price. names are on the label. And the poor kids. You know? Because, you know, <laughs> the first idea was really to put a special account for the kids. So, sure. so you know, they can go to college maybe. <laughs> or, well, but so far, we're not sure. That <laughs> might work earlier than <laughs> well, well, so, so. <laughs> Now the Matisse, which is, you know, I'm dying to try this, because I haven't even get a chance to try this, because basically we got it in, you know, people were calling and screaming, we, we sold it out, I didn't even get the snag a bottle, so this is my first chance to try this, so let's see what happens. Uh, you, you, you know, I mean, the, the, we wanted to make a statement here with uh, a very sophisticated label, a very sophisticated wine in a way. Something we're proud of, obviously, like like the CJ, but uh, Just as a awful. As this wine is terrible. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is the kind of episodes, it was funny, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to leave to do a Wine Library TV episode because I'm such a big fan, you know, poster on the wall fan of his wines that I didn't want to come off too ridiculous on camera and be like, I love you, for, you know, but the bottom line is that the wines for the money, and that's the real key. The, uh, the wines are world class, and I still think he's extremely fair. I mean, Matisse is still under a hundred dollars. I'm sure of that. I, I don't know exactly what it is. It's about eighty-five. Yeah, I mean, Italian. you know, this is was it ninety-five Parker this year? Ninety-six? Yeah, so he, crazy. He, he was a ninety-three to ninety-five. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about the elegance, the complexity, you know, and obviously, you know, Philippe's in a tough spot because he has a lot of clients, and I don't want to compare it to maybe Brian Family or Vineyard 29 or the other things he makes, but the wine is just extraordinary. Just as a recap, and we haven't done this, why don't you, you know, because this is going to be really interesting, I think you'll enjoy this more than any part, and I know this is a long episode, so if you've held on, you're going to get a treat. <laughs> why don't you just rattle off your career, the wineries that you've worked for? Oh, it's very difficult, and I, I, I oh, honestly, it's uh, it's uh, difficult to put some name on. Sure. But you know, I was lucky enough to work with the best in the business. I started uh, uh, by working at Aubryon, you know, who kind of uh, was an unbelievable experience. I worked with Moex Company for three years at Petrus and Dominus in California. That's why I went there. I was able to really have a, a close experience also with Chate, uh, you know people like at Chate, uh, Cheval Blanc. Uh, uh, but I was also able to work with a top consultant in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people like, uh, maybe they don't know him very well, like Boissonneau, who was in fact Emile Peno, uh, you know, protégé and works at Lafitte uh, Rothschild. Um, obviously, the Moex team with Jean-Claude Berouet and Christian Moex, who kind of gave me my uh, foundation of winemaking. And uh, also Michel Roland, the, one of the uh, uh, most renowned names uh, um, as a wonderful international winemaker. Sure. Uh, still working with Michel also uh, right now in the Napa Valley with three different projects. Uh, Bryant, uh, um, um, Dalla Valley. Are getting sick yet? Dalla Valley. Mm -hmm. It's I new. Heard. It's I new. Heard. I'm so happy. Yeah, it's one of, uh, you know, was one of my, uh, my that's gonna be a great. That's going to be a big yeah. resurrection, I hope, because you uh, know, if you follow Dalla Valley, you know, it's kind of been, you know, so yeah, I'm excited so to see what you do there. We, we're very uh, ecstatic and motivated. I'm going to so. cut him off here because he's probably throwing <laughs> up by the names he threw out there. But obviously, the pedigree is there. We're honored to have Philippe here, and, and two episodes is a lot better than one. And we'll see you next time on Wine Library TV. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, it was Thank a pleasure. You.